Hello everybody, my name is Julian Thomas. I'm Managing Director and Founder of Race Logic Limited. I've been following the fascinating story of the speed record attempt for the SSC to Adara, and I particularly enjoyed Shmi's video where he went into great detail analysing the video and the data to work out what was going on because it didn't seem right. And I've also enjoyed the videos from Misha and Robert I thought their uh, audio analysis was particularly cool and a very interesting and clever way of looking into it. A little bit about Race Logic. I founded the company 28 years ago. We're an electronics company, about 100 people, and we supply the automotive and technology worlds with high accuracy position and simulation equipment. Our Velocity Box, V Box, is used by the majority of car companies and tyre companies in the world when they're measuring acceleration, top speed and braking performance of their cars. And we also supply a GPS simulator called the Labsat to a lot of the large technology companies and they use that to calibrate and test their GPS systems. My company was involved in the Koenigsegg speed record run and so I've got access to all of the video and data from that run and I've used a lot of that data to help me measure certain distances and look at the feasibility of the data that we're seeing from the SSC to Atara. What I wanted to do is look at the speed data in much more detail, but not having access to the raw GPS data, I had to make do with what I've got, which is an overlay on the original video and what I've done is I have extracted the speed data frame by frame from this video and I've done this automatically, not by hand. What I've done is I masked off the speedo in the, the video. I then created a small video that had just that speed data in it. I then inverted that video so it was black text on a white background and then I imported that into Adobe Photoshop and then used Adobe Photoshop to export individual images, PNG files of each frame with the speed in there. And then I pass that into some character recognition software that uh, we use. And I've created an Excel spreadsheet of the speed, the detailed speed from every single frame of that video. And I've double checked the, the data and none of it has uh, been dropped and the data seems to have come across very accurately. And if you look at the data, you can see some much finer detail now, and we can start to take some proper measurements and do some calibration to work out precisely what is going on. The first thing I noticed in the data was that it was out of sync with the video slightly. So my first task was to align it. And what I found was it was a few frames out to begin with, but got progressively worse throughout the video file. I think the reason for this is that the video data overlay was produced in post-processing and it's very difficult to align a video system that's running on one clock with GPS which is running on another, which is why really you should have a synchronized video and data system in the car so that removes any doubt and you don't have to align things up in post-processing. The way that I aligned the video and data was to watch the video and look for when Oliver pulled the paddle shift and also listen to the audio so you, I could hear the, the gear shifts. I then aligned the longitudinal acceleration that I derived by differentiating the speed trace. And the longitudinal acceleration dips in between each gear change. So you can use that to get a much more accurate alignment of the video and the data. The first point of reference I used was the distance from medium one to medium two and I calculated this as 1.84 kilometers and by looking at the speed profile that I now have we can actually accurately measure 
the distance travelled. So we're not looking at average speed, we're looking at actual distance travelled between those two points. Using the aligned data that was represented in the video, the distance travelled between these two points was 2.73 kilometres, whereas the distance should have been 1.84. I did the same for mediums 2 and 3, where the actual distance is 2.284 kilometres, and the calculated distance travelled using the data from the video was 3.386 kilometres, so quite a big discrepancy. By taking the ratio of the distances travelled, we can work out what the scale factor involved is, and by my calculations that was 1.48. So what I did is I took the original data, I divided the speed by 1.48, and I put that back into our analysis software to measure the distance. When I did that, the distances come out very, very close to the measured distances in both cases. So it's not just a scale factor that works for one situation, but it works for both situations. So I'm fairly confident this is the correct number. By using this correction factor, I have calculated that the estimated top speed of the car was 223 0.75 miles an hour. So how has this happened? Well, looking at the data on the screen and also the image of the laptop in the video, this isn't standard software that Duratron supply. Now, Duratron are a fantastic company, very professional. Um, we've dealt with them for a number of years. They used to be our VBOX distributor in Austria and I don't believe that software was supplied by them because it has the SSC Tuatara branding on it. Therefore, someone else has created this software and they're taking the output from the Duraton GPS and they are then displaying those values on the screen. So I believe that they have used a scale factor of roughly 1.48 from the output of the Duraton the screen and that is why we are seeing the discrepancy in the data. What's exciting about the data is it's obvious that there's plenty of performance left in the car and it wasn't reaching maximum revs in that gear and there's another gear to go as well and if you look at the longitudinal acceleration it is pulling almost 0.1 g at that speed so it has a lot of headroom and the car will definitely go a lot faster um, if they run it again. So talking about speed record attempts, what are my tips for best practice? Well, the first thing to do is to make sure the GPS antenna is sat on the roof of the car because it has to have a ground plane underneath it, a, a section that stops any reflections of the signals from the ground, and that can be metal or it can be carbon fibre, but it needs to be in a clear view of the sky. Putting GPS antenna inside a car is very bad practice and you'll get noisy, inaccurate data. Also, if you're using multiple GPS antennas, make sure they're separated by at least 30 centimetres, otherwise they will interfere with each other and cause inaccuracies. I strongly disagree with the suggestion that multiple GPS companies should be involved with the validation of the speed using GPS. You could just have one company who supply an ISO calibrated GPS device ideally with a video overlay that is made in real time, so no post-processing is involved. You should put an industry standard display in front of the driver and include that in the video, and that will give a further validation of the test. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I look forward to the next speed record attempt, whatever that may be. And if you want RaceLogic to be involved, then please get in contact. Thank you.